must have been an odd atmosphere shooting it, like, th th you know, Martin and Ben, when you were out there. I mean, the crowds were massive, weren't they? I, when I, you know, I'd just be sitting on Twitter and people would be tweeting pictures of, of massive Beatlemania crowds standing and watching you. So it basically became almost like a theatre performance while you were filming. Yeah, it it, yes, it did. Um. <laughs> and is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> it was like being at a premiere, wasn't it? It was like being at a premiere and running lines. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was odd. It was, it was like not like doing a play and not like filming either. It was, it was a new genre of acting. Yeah. yeah. The I mean what did, did I do in my day's work genre of acting. Yeah. That's yeah. It's yeah. They it do is, tend to be thing. mostly going in and out of Baker Street rather than huge involved yeah. scenes, which yeah. this does have. So. Yeah. And what are those crowds like? Describe what it's like kind of when you get there. I mean, is, is it quiet respectfulness? Is the squeeing? Is the, is the throwing of items? Is it kind of what? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to describe the crowd. <laughs> Tell us what you uh, saw. No, Show okay, us in no, the dog. Um, it what was happened? Well, yeah, th I, do you know what? You, it, incredibly respectful. Very, very tolerant and understanding of the filming process and just uh, amazingly they were tolerant happy of us. to be there. Uh, tolerant <laughs> of us, yeah. Just, uh, just tolerant of us. <laughs> really tolerant of us. Um, yeah, no, but very really uh, happy to be there. And, uh, you know, if there was a problem with rubbish or noise or, you know, any kind of crowd orientated behavior then you know they uh, very responsive and 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 good to you know it was like those easy to correspond with them Sherlock music, is isn't? filmed before a live studio audience <laughs> yeah it was a bit like, and it it was a bit like street I was standing theater. behind the monitor with like Jeremy that. and there was this enormous noise and uh, he said what what happened I said Martin just opened a packet of crisps <laughs> 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 and it's true it was a good packet <laughs> can I ask what flavor <laughs> Um, Jeremy, what's it like logistically with those? I mean, did I see some crowds in the underground shot when they were in the underground at Westminster? You can see in the very corner of a shot about 50 fans, it looks like, standing there holding books, waiting to get <laughs> things signed. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You've got time to re-edit it. You've got Take to re-edit it. Re you can just yeah, crop that. Um, yes, they were, when they were walking across the concourse, I mean, mm. yeah, 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 they were... They were there. Yes. And um, <laughs> there so basically, there are certain areas which you couldn't control. Um, London Underground, you're allowed sort of six people at any time as your entourage, I think, going through public spaces. Is that on an Oyster card or is that just some kind <laughs> of. <laughs> that's well, no, they don't go through the gate oh, okay. because we didn't actually have an Oyster card on us. If you see <laughs> that, we, we turned back. Uh, yeah, so there were occasions where, but everyone was completely cool and turned their back or, you know, accommodated us. So that was, it was actually quite easier from that point of view. Are any of the underground crowd here? Did anybody recognise themselves in that shot? Oh, stop sitting. Um, sorry. I think, yeah, we're not. Yeah. I think in fairness, it was just uh, they were coincidentally there. Sorry, no, I thought it was lovely. The series four, thanks. No, it's sorry. good to get the audience in the show. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mistake. It's like, the it's, like, it's like the Muppet show, you know, you just turn around, you see the audience, and then you go back to the show. It's nice, it's interactive. It's, it's the review just gets better and better. That's good. <laughs> like the Muppet show. <laughs> Two years <laughs> in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they could have got professional journalists to do this. I just bust <laughs> security in, and I'm coming to ask what I want to ask. Um, they, have so been, they have been dealt with, though. They will not be appearing in the back of any more shots. <laughs> <laughs> They've done their bit. That's it. They need an equity card now. Um, so how long ago did you know what was going to happen then? Because when we did the last premiere here, you were going, right, we're going to have to start working now before the machinery gets rusty. Presumably you knew what was going to happen next then. Did you do all of the last series knowing what was going to happen in the next series? Um, we, oh. knew that we knew how, uh, we started, the very, very first thing we thought about uh, doing this uh, in uh, the second series was how we were going to end it, which was the impossible death, followed by the reveal that he was definitely alive. So we knew exactly, uh, then we had to sort of work out how to do it. And it was a long and <laughs> difficult process and we got help from people and all sorts of things. Um, and help very much helped by the geography of bars because you, you actually wouldn't see the body hit the pavement. We were going to do it as a, a trick. Uh, it's, it's a two-stage trick, isn't it? Uh, there was going to be um, uh, a sort of platform, like uh, um, a washing, uh, window cleaning platform, that Sherlock would hit, and then another body would drop out of it. Mm -hmm. This is an old trick. Like That's actually why there is a reference in the newspaper to a refit of historic hospital. And then we changed our minds because Toby Haynes, who directed Reichenbach, said the ambulance station is at exactly the right level. We don't need an extra thing. So that's how that came about. Oh, that's nice. Look at once. And uh, can I ask, um, in that plot, is that actually a feasible plot? Is there a, a tube station called Sumatra Station, Sumatra Road Station, that yeah. we could actually blow up <laughs> Parliament no, with? Because I mean, there is that danger when you're coming up with these great plots. There isn't. That you're there actually is laying <laughs> the seed Sumatra, for mass destruction. Sumatra, the giant rat of Sumatra. The Sumatra Road is in West Hampstead. It's a little off 
Westminster, alas. But I couldn't resist it. But there is a there is a station in Hampstead uh, called Bull and Bush, which was never opened. They built the platforms and the stairs, and then no service building. That's what inspired it. But I, I love the tube. I've always loved the tube. That's where it came from. The determination to put the tube in. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, it is a love story to London as well, isn't it? Kind of like you know, the, the whole show is just kind of you know, is shot. Isn't that shot of Parliament blowing up amazing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But in all the trailers, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that easier because you just had a knee operation, hadn't you? And to get back to get down to the yeah, stairs, yeah, it's, not, no. it's only 130 steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose you were just too tired to notice those people in the back of shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sort of <laughs> no, it's actually too late. They'd all gone. <laughs> well, I got to the bottom. Yeah. Um, so it's a love story to London, but it's also uh, obviously about the people. And there's some uh, so some notable uh, uh, new additions to the family and cameos. Um, first of all, uh, keeping it a family affair, we've got Mary, the introduction of Mary. I think everybody is very much loving Mary. <laughs> so, so given that that's your wife, how difficult was that audition? Was that kind of, when you were doing, when you were doing the chemistry reads, were you kind of like, everybody else who came in just like, no, I'm not feeling this, no. <laughs> no, I'm not feeling this. I know this is the one. Well, <laughs> I think uh, you'll have to ask Mark and Sue and people about because I think that was their I mean I didn't say it wasn't a John and Yoko thing where I said I want my missus in this or else <laughs> uh, I think they had thought who would be a good Mary and uh, you know uh, I think Amanda is a really good Mary you know like if, 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 if she was nothing to do with me she would be someone who definitely would have gone up yeah. for it uh, she's there or thereabouts in that casting and Mark had worked with her before Sue had worked with her before and um, they, we all just kind of got on and we knew that chemistry would work yeah What's that like on set? I mean, if they have an argument and everybody else is kind of like, oh, no, it's a domestic, kind of like, <laughs> how, how difficult is that to do? Amanda and I when? never argue. Mm -hmm. Really? <coughs> 13 years, we have never even spoken to each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we've officially met. Hi. Yeah. No, we, we're quite good at, I mean, you know, obviously, we, we do row. But, uh, but no, we try not to at work and... You know, we, we like everybody else involved in this, we love this show. You know, and Amanda was uh, delighted to be in it, and I was delighted to have her around. I, I hope everyone else was delighted. You were delightful her. with her as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was wonderful. Thank you. It's wonderful. What? It's true. It is true. It's very it's lovely. It's, like it's really you care lovely. For they work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, obviously, the BBC must be happy because, I mean, it's just one cab for you two to share on yeah, set. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. you two are just sharing a cab on set. I mean, it's just, you know... The spoken truth. Yes, yeah. they must be thrilled. And then the other cameo that was in the, uh, in the show, which I was surprised so many people noticed, um, when we see Sherlock's parents, they are, of course, Ben's real parents. Um, <laughs> try, try sharing a car with the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bigger car. Yeah, I nearly cried watching it, actually. I'm so proud of them. And I'm so proud of the reaction they got as well. They're brilliant in it. And again, I think they're perfect casting as my parents. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's <laughs> worth saying, and it's that we, this is really the first time we've sort of gone beyond. I don't know if Sherlock Holmes' parents had ever been shown mm. in, in yeah. a version, and it's, uh, it sort of felt the right thing to do in the third season to just be even cheekier. Because mm. what, and why not, you know? Um, and, and we've had this idea for a long time. They're a bit like, that th Sherlock and Mycroft are like Niles and Frasier Crane. <laughs> and, and they have very ordinary parents, really, who are just lovely people. And actually, Sherlock is, is more likely to be the product of a loving home than a broken one, in a strange way. He's sort of slightly indulged. I think. Pretty confident, <laughs> yes. So what was that like on set? Were they just there for one day? Was it kind it of was like... I mean, I was, it was kind of nerve-wracking. I mean, they are, you know, they're, they're extra card-carrying members, but, you know, it's just... <laughs> it's <laughs> it's nerve-wracking, because they're they're actors and they get nervous as well and uh, and yet they were brilliant they hit home runs and they were fantastic um, and just it was lovely it was really really nice to have them on set yeah um, we did the Baker Street scenes quite early as well so I think everyone was a little bit sort of tense it was getting back into mm. it again but yeah it was it was really gorgeous it was a very special feeling so th the show is now global now I mean you know I think we're all aware of how big it is um, I was reading how huge it is in China um, and you have you have a Chinese nickname there Benedict <laughs> apparently uh, yes. Is it? Uh, what is <laughs> what is your Chinese nickname? I've got a couple. One, one's curly hair, which is that, and the other one means something like a uh, bit of a dickhead, but he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, China. <laughs> Translate. Please. Yeah, yeah. No, literally, that is pretty much what it means. Wow. Apparently, it's yeah. curly foo. Curly foo. Curly foo. Yes. And what soon, curly foo got married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Never stops working. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, do you not have a Chinese nickname yet? Uh, uh, no, do. I don't you think do. I do. Do I? Fashion. Fashion. Uh, that fashion. Fashion. Really? That's what I've been told. <laughs> really? Fashion. Is that like <laughs> that that's so, so yeah. exciting. That's so exciting. Wow. Now I get okay. it. That's like a Bond villain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's called Fashion. Just Fashion. I yeah, know, it's so cool. <laughs> Just a one name nickname. I'd like wow, that piece, man. China. Like Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> I get sort of a dickhead and then a qualifier, but he's all right, and Martin gets fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, do you like fashion? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, th this is n one of those times where we can just put messages out there, and if you don't like either of you, your nicknames, you can just say, I'd like to work. Yeah, in the same way that when China, what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, fashion's all right. Fashion's okay for me, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. No, I like, I, I like, I'm just saying you these like are yours, the times. You like yours, though, Ben? Could I yours love be my, Oh, no, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, in a little glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> Might be one word. Let's talk about um, the the fan club of the empty hearse in the show, and uh, and uh, and the depiction of them. Is that is that a, is that a loving thing? Is that a is that is that a is that you you love those fans? Totally that's a cheeky little wink. It that's is. A I kind mean, of I mean, that's just, it's the same sort of thing. That uh, knowing how big it's become, you can't not address it. And we'd start we started really with Kitty Riley's character yeah. in in Reichenbach. You know, she, she actually introduces wearing the deer stock. Mm. Uh, and it was a lot of, it's a sort of, you know, elision between reality. But it's sort of, it's about, it's about Sherlock becoming as much of a celebrity in the real world as he is um, in the fictional world, you know. Um, so it was just a sort of way of, of doing that. And then this idea that Anderson, who, as you see by the end, is like Inspector Dreyfus in the Pink Panther, <laughs> <laughs> has, has lost his job and his, his mind, really, because he's become obsessed and, and guilt-stricken about what he's done that uh, he might actually put together a group which is trying to work out theories, which in a way is a bit like people have really done. So it sort of all kind of comes together. Really. When we were filming it, though, at the same time we were filming it, outside your trailer, do you remember, there was a little empty, empty hearse group, weren't there? With yeah. Deerstalkers oh, yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Literally, uh, literally that moment uh, where the unit base was, you could look out, <laughs> and they were just there in the Deerstalkers. It was just like they... Actually, we didn't have enough of them for the shots. No. We should have asked them to come down. 